sense. So let's look at this a little bit more in context of our sexual behavior, sexual brokenness. What are some ways that shame keeps us stuck in those behaviors? Well, I think it uh, gets us stuck because we're just afraid. Fear, you know, I, I go back to perfect love, cast out fear. And um, I think just when you learn to, uh, I have a secret and I got by with it and nobody knows, then I'm going to try to just manage this on my own. And I don't always ask what makes that make sense uh, from our uh, Adrian Hickman would say, mm -hmm. or I don't really take a deep dive to say, hmm, I wonder why I keep doing this. I wonder if there's something be underneath this that's driving me to cope this way. Mm. Um, but I think it's just fear of being known. You know, shame just kind of keeps us in, in, you know, bondage to, to the fear of, again, if people know me, will they really love me? Yeah. And then that sets the trap of addiction, and we just kind of keep running that play until what we're doing isn't working any longer, the pain gets too greater, yeah. or we get caught. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's the best gift it is because then we can turn and kind of start to begin to deal with the shame. And, um, you know, for me, I it, uh, either you're going to kill me or I kill you, but one of us is going to die here, <laughs> you know, because I'm seeking help and, and, and moving forward to try to, to try to heal my soul in that regard. Yeah, I, I think you're right on that that fear of, well, this is just who I am, and I don't want to tell people or show yeah, people because right. then they'll reject me, and I'll, I'll not only be stuck in a bad behavior, I'll be alone. And, and so we get in this pattern of I've got to put my best foot forward and hide all the rest and, and not let myself be seen or, or, or really valued for who I am, and yet that's ultimately what we need for healing yes. and recovery really from any behavior, but I think particularly in something as personal um, and private as our sexuality, like we, we need to be known and seen for who we are, but fear keeps us trapped. And, and we can think, I even hear it in people's stories, that this battle, like to not go back into the old behavior, they'll say things like, you know, I, I gave in and I, cause that's just ultimately who I am or what I do or what, you know, they, they misinterpret desire. It's like, right. well, because I have these desires or lusts, right and I give in to them, it's like, well, that just must be who I am. I'm just yeah. kind of a dirty person, mm -hmm. or I like those things. What's wrong with me? And no one has helped them challenge the assumptions they have that that's not who you are. Yeah. That's not your identity. Yeah. You're yeah. not you're not living out your true God-given, you know, he didn't make you that way. Mm -hmm. there, there are realities of living in a broken, sinful, fallen world, the pain that happens to us as kids, the patterns we learn. Mm -hmm. but, but all of that, you know, I love the language that Jenna Remersma has used when she talks about all of us being made in the image of God and that sin is less about bad things, but it's like something covers over that mirror of our truly yeah. reflecting God's image yeah. in yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that would be, I think, a good definition of shame, too, that this stuff crowds in and we can't see who we really Distorts are. Distorts our vision. And, and then mm -hmm. we get stuck in the patterns that kind of perpetuate who yeah. we think we are when it's not the truth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the only way to get out of unhealthy behaviors is to admit that it's there and ask for help or seek help. And shame keeps us from that. Because at some point in our story, we learned it's not okay to talk about this. It's not okay to admit I struggle. It's not okay to ask for help. You know, and Nick, you talked about it in our previous episode when we talked about isolation. Like, we're almost taught culturally that you can do this by pulling yourself up by your bootstraps on your own. The Lone Ranger, that's how we do it. When in reality, that's never the way God designed us to heal or become more sanctified. It's always in relationship with him and other people. But shame keeps us away from that. And I, I, I keep going back to what we've already talked about. It's, it's fear. It's fear of rejection. Fear of someone reinforcing that is dirty. You are gross. You are unlovable. And that, I mean, that's why we get stuck is because we don't want to experience the same thing we've already experienced in life. Another adage is fake it till you make it. And I think that's such a big lie. We kind of say it tongue in cheek is a funny thing, but it's really, it's, it's, it's really a sad thing. Uh, faking it doesn't help you or anybody else around you uh, when you have to cover up and hide. And so the more we can learn to create authentic communities to say, this is where I'm at and I'm either stuck or need help to move forward. Boy, that's, that's actually to me a really wonderful place because I think that creates some um, joy in the heart of the divine because that we're learning how to trust and learning love is breaking down those mm -hmm. walls yeah. to see yeah. our true yeah. identity. Totally. 